So our Fish and Wildlife Department walleye management program has a lot of components to it. Uh, a part of which, or a significant part of which, is our hatchery operations that uh, allow us to rear these fish and stock the walleye back into Lake Champlain to contribute to the population and, and provide fishing opportunities. In order for us to perfect our hatchery operations over, over time and make sure that those fish are growing and surviving and contributing to that fishery, we need to know how well they're doing and whether they even survive when we put them out in the lake. So in the hatchery, right before they get released into the, into the lake, they are actually marked with a, a chemical dye called oxytetracycline or OTC. The OTC is uh, just an antibiotic uh, that's used uh, in agriculture, um, but it has fluorescent properties. And when we dissolve it into um, water in the hatchery, we can put the fish into a bath of the OTC for about six hours. And they actually absorb that oxytetracycline into their bone structure. Uh, the chemical has uh, fluorescent properties which when looked at under a certain wavelength of light in a microscope will actually glow. So um, part of our long-term uh, walleye stocking assessment program is to go out and collect fish in the spring from rivers that were stocked three years prior. Male walleye mature and swim up the rivers to spawn for the first time at three years of age. So we collect those three-year-old males uh, from a river that were stocked three years ago. So in 2022, uh, we collected male walleye from the Missisquoi River because it was stocked in 2019 with eggs collected from Missisquoi River at the time. Um, we take the otoliths, which are a small bone located in the head of a fish uh, that actually is their ear stones. It gives them a sense of balance, um, but it's also composed of the same material that their rest of their bones are composed, which is calcium. So that calcium um, uh, allows the OTC to bind to it when they are marked in that bath in the hatchery. And uh, they are then released and the fish grow and live for three years and they come back into the river. And we collect a small subsample of those representative sample to look at their otoliths under the microscope and document whether they have that hatchery mark or not. So that tells us the presence of those hatchery fish in the, in the random sample that we collect from the overall spawning population, how much of that uh, sample is actually comprised of hatchery fish from hatchery origin three years ago, or what's comprised of wild fish, which means they do not have the mark. Our intensive culture system at Grand Isle is being perfected by the staff there for years. Uh, and it's, it's at the point now where it's producing some really quality walleye for stocking, walleye fingerlings. But in the early years, we had an experimental program where we were marking the fish differently with different banding patterns of marks uh, to de determine whether our uh, intensive system is working um, or a pond system is working better, whether stocking them as fry, smaller fish, or stocking them as fingerlings uh, was uh, having better results. So we were able to look at these fish under the microscope and know exactly how and when those fish were stocked and what the proportion of uh, those fish um, were within that spawning population. So we could see whether uh, a lot of fry were there as part of the hatchery fish, or it was a lot of fingerlings and whether uh, within the fingerling stocking, whether those fingerlings came from a pond being reared in a pond or if they were came from being reared in our new intensive culture system. Over time, we've slowly taken away the uh, growing um, strategies that didn't really result in many fish returning. And that was the small fish, uh, the fry, they didn't grow very well and they didn't survive in the lake. And we didn't see many fish coming back with the fry marks on their otoliths. Uh, and also, um, uh, we have slowly realized that the pond fish also don't fare as well in the lake as uh, the intensive culture fish do for a, a lot of reasons. Um, but those, the quality of those fish coming out of our hatchery now under that new cutting edge uh, intensive culture system is really uh, providing um, an amazing uh, quality of fish going into the lake. And we're seeing that now in our returns because almost every fish that we get back that has a hatchery mark was from that intensive culture system from our Edward Fish Culture Station. And that really bodes well for the future of walleye fishing in Vermont.